Okay, everybody, welcome once again to the Meat and Potato Show, Conservative Talk and Awesome Rock. I am your host, Christopher Mader, and we are welcoming to the YouTube channel my good friend Tom Weaver. He was down on a trip uh, down to Chattanooga, and he was not able to call in the other night, but we, as always on the Meat and Potato Show, managed to catch up, and we caught up with our friend here on Saturday night to record this broadcast here on the Meat and Potato Show. And because it is the Meat and Potato Show, it is the top of the hour, and we'll get back to Tom in a few minutes here to introduce him. You are probably already agree our political system is in trouble, but you do not know the half of it. From voter fraud to election ch ch chicanery, I'm sorry, of all kinds, America teeters on the edge of scandal every November. Sooner or later, we're headed for more disasters as bad or worse than what we saw in Florida in 2000. Dr. Larry Sabato, director of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia. In John Fund's book, Stealing Elections, he opens chapter one with some chilling numbers from the Zogby poll on how Americans feel about voting. Fully over 40% of Americans feel that there is significant voter fraud at every election. It isn't surprising. I've experienced this myself. Voting shenanigans here at the voting stations in Worcester, Massachusetts. Last election year in 2012, the machine broke down. I was there. I watched it. I was trying to put my ballot into the machine. I turned to one of the police officers standing there, and then some poll workers came over and said, Oh, don't worry. Just, just put it on top of the machine. We'll take care of it later. Well... God only knows what happened to all the Romney ballots. In fact, one element of evidence to voter fraud is in the slim margins that have occurred over the last decade since the debacle in Florida in 2000. Voting is an act of decisiveness. Either you're a majority and who is on board, or you are not. It is a rare, polit it is a rare occasion in political history that elections end in a 51-49 percentile. True elections range between 7 to 10 percent of number fluctuations. However, since Florida 2000, many of this nation's elections are falling within that narrow 1 to 2 percent. The potential for fraud is quite real. In some local elections, the numbers are in the single digits. Al Franken's election is, in a, is a prime example of proven voter fraud. His numbers were within a few hundred in a district of millions of registered voters. This from an article in the D.C. Clothesline by Stephen Ahil. After election night, Norm Coleman led Al Franken by 725 votes. But by the time the Democrats quit counting, he lost by 312 votes. How could this happen? Voter fraud. If you would merely toss out the 393 convicted felons who voted, Coleman would have won by 81 votes. Actually, there were 1,099 questionable votes by felons, but the confirmed cases added up to 393. Of course, as always, Democrats were able to count on the dead, who cast a total of 2,812 votes for Franken. This is from the Minnesota Secretary of State, Mark Ritchie, who is a partisan, who, is extremely co who has extremely close ties to ACORN. He was supposed to have purged the dead from the rolls every single month, but he didn't. And ACORN turned in 43,000 voter registrations. I didn't know that Daffy Duck and Catherine the Great lived in Minnesota. That brings the fraudulent vote count to 3,205. What is equally, equally disturbing is that since we know and have proof of voter fraud, Al Franken still gets to hold his seat. At no point in time has anyone been convicted, election commissions indicted, nor has Franken stepped down until the issue is decided. The fraud candidate gets to hold his office on his fraud voting. Is it any wonder the legislation that they support 
is also equally fraudulent. In 1997, the House voted to prosecute the activist group Hermanitad Mexicana Nacional for, for registering hundreds of illegals, but the Immigration Service dropped the investigation over privacy issues. Wow. So they get to vote as an illegal, illegally, because they're illegal, but then when we have to prosecute them, suddenly they get to hide under our constitutional laws of privacy? Hmm. Hmm. Is that a meat and potatoes moment when you go, hmm, hmm. Janet Reno put the kibosh on a Louisiana Senate election probe that same year after Democrats walked off the committee. Janet claimed that the panel was now no longer bipartisan and dismantled the whole investigation. Again, the fraud candidate gets to keep the fraud seat. And where are the election officials? Who checked the voter registration cards? No one's checking the voter registration cards. I was working a part-time job last year at a local mini-mart, and a woman walked in with a clipboard and a, voter register and a whole bunch of voter registration cards. She asked me if I was registered to vote. I lied and said no, because I love screwing with people. She then removed the card, checked off the Democratic box, and told me to fill in the rest of the info. I looked at it and uh, said, uh, I'm not a Democrat. Her head exploded, which actually pissed me off because I had just mopped up the floor. Well, I'm only registering Democrat, she said to me. And I asked her if she was working for the election commission, or maybe ACORN. She told me she was. I informed her that what she was doing was illegal, and it was fraud. But that didn't seem to matter to her. Apparently, a simple convenience store clerk is not intelligent enough to warrant concern from an election official or an ACORN official. John Fung goes on to explain in his book, Stealing Elections, those with an unconstrained vision think that if we want a society where people are enlightened prosperous and equal we must develop programs to accomplish those goals and work to implement them well good god in heaven john this woman took a page right from your book but john does go on to explain those with a constrained vision believed that the goal of reason should not be to remodel society but rather to identify natural laws and work within them. But this means nothing to an activist group hell-bent on doing exactly what Fund warns us about. Progressives do want to remodel society on behalf of their own image. Let's enter NOI, the New Organizing Institute. One of the many socket wrenches in this organization's toolbox is VIP, the Voter Information Project. Funded by Google, AT&T, Microsoft, Facebook, and sponsored by the Pew Charitable Trust, VIP hosted a hackathon in New York City to help de Blasio get elected. There was even an award prize giving for the computer nerd who came up with the most ingenious way to register or <coughs> hack voters. According to VIP, there seems to be a large majority of Americans who do not know how to vote where to vote or when to vote. Well, never mind who's on the ballot. I guess their target audience are people who do not own televisions or read papers or somehow live in caves still. VIP uses an open format to make data available and accessible, bringing 21st century technology to the elections and ensuring that all Americans have the opportunity to cast an informed vote. That's a quote from their site. An informed vote? If these people are so supposedly disconnected and ill-informed, well, how can they cast an informed vote? I go on to quote from the NOI website. In 2008, an estimated 1.9 million voters did not cast a ballot for one simple reason. They did not know where to go. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm coming to the end of my diatribe here, Tom. Hang on, but you got to listen to this. It just gets, it gets sadder and sorrier. <laughs> they did not know where to go. As organizers, we know how frustrating it can be when people want to engage and want to vote, but no, don't know how to. 
And when we don't have the resources easily available to give them the information they need, we miss opportunities. NOI and VIP intend to electronically register voters. No ID required. This is the next generation of motor voter laws. Since most states do not require people to prove they are citizens in order to get a driver's license, registering the vote should be just as easy. Yeah, why not? Even the language in the Affordable Care Act does not require you to be a citizen, unless you actually are, and then, of course, you have to claim you are, so that they can appropriately tax you accordingly to pay for the other people who don't have to claim they are. <laughs> I'm going here? I know, I know, I know, I know. Interestingly, NOI has all sorts of se seminars extolling the horrors of voter ID. 25 states now require it. I think that number is even bigger now. And one of the speakers is not happy about that. Lee Rowland spoke last year at a seminar about this very issue. She claims that 40% of American women do not have a birth, birth certificate. I did not know that. I guess that explains why women cannot get jobs or drive a car. She also claims that 78% of black men in Wisconsin have no ID whatsoever. How is this possible? An informed voter makes a decision based on knowledge. Knowledge comes from research. Research is based on an understanding that information must be derived and consumed in order to understand what the hell you are doing. If the intent of NOI is to register as many stupid people as possible to skew an election, we must question the motives of this group and look to see who is running this sideshow. I have always said that we as conservatives must adopt actually pretty much the same process. We must recruit pretty much the same people, the same way the progressives do. These people are organized and they have large corporations behind them as funding, which I find ironic since progressives always decry the influence of big business in election. But then again, progressivism is always a fluid political ideology. They always hold a wet finger to the air to see which way the political wind blows in their favor. We, as conservatives, must take this very same principle. Perhaps we might have to lie. Perhaps we might have to cheat. Perhaps we might have to steal, as they do, in order to win. But herein lies the rub. Once we do win, we turn the tables around, and we institute actual constitutional policy. We return our country back to the rule of natural law, natural jurisprudence, congressional accountability, and the dismantling of our bloated agency. We become an even bigger and far more horrible monster under that bed. And that is the diatribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Meat and Potato Show, Conservative Talk and Awesome Rock. My good friend here is calling in. Where are you calling in from, Tom? Westford, Massachusetts. Well, you're right here in Massachusetts. Uh, so, Tom... I want to thank you for calling in. You work for the Voter ID Project. You've been working on this thing for quite some time. And I want to thank you for calling into the show. Uh, you are the, currently the founder of DTW Systems. Uh, it's a small company. You clean industrial water systems. You've got to tell me about that. You've got about 400 systems designed and installed over the past 30 years. Uh, you're active in scouting. And uh, you're a Minute, Man, Minute, Minute Club Muster. Minute and Cub Muster. There yes. you go. And you offer constitutional courses. I wonder if you know my good friend Catherine White. And uh, We differ on a couple of things, but yes, I do. <laughs> and uh, I want to welcome you to the show, sir. Thank you so much for calling into the Meat and Potato Show. Thank you very much for having me. So, um, you heard my diatribe. There is voter fraud. Of course, we just finished the 2014 election. We've heard tons of it across the nation. I've interviewed a bunch of people over the last year during my candidate interview series, and um, I would just love to have you take over the microphone and tell us what you think. Well, there is voter fraud, uh, and it is it is very difficult to prove voter fraud when you don't look for it. 
it is impossible to prove voter fraud if you don't look at people's IDs. And if you do see the IDs and you don't check further to make sure that they're citizens, it even makes the problem even more and more of an issue. Right. The big thing is, is you were right, the elections are so close. If people realized how close we are to losing this great nation due to progressive, or I like to say socialist and communist ideals, um, maybe they would get up off their butts and come vote. Right. Because even the last election, uh, the, the, the president, the dear leader, uh, said, you know, I heard the third of you, but I also know what the other two-thirds of you that didn't vote are thinking. I'm going, boy, that's pretty good. I don't know how... How could he know that? I mean, I don't even know right. what my wife thinks sometimes, and I live with her. Right. But it's um, there is voter fraud. We allow anybody to vote. It is easy to get on the list. The I don't know what the solution is. I do know that Rachel Maddow is very upset at me because I set up on a polling booth and with a little sign that said "Show ID to Vote, Completely Voluntary." And there, people were smiling and saying thank you, and so were all the people working the polls. It's that it was a good thing. It's amazing uh, because I do it too. When I go to vote, I always show my ID. They say, "Oh, you don't have to." I said, "Well, no, I should have to." But here you go. And uh, funny is when I'm standing, at, I I do it particularly when I know that there's other people standing behind me and I notice that other people say, oh, and they do, they reach into their pockets and they, they, yes. they do, they pull out their IDs. Even though they know they're not required by law to do so, they do it as a courtesy. It's like, no, because they think to themselves, no, this is important to me and I don't want anybody else claiming my name. I don't want anybody else crossing out my name. You know when they when they cross out your name in the book and they and or they click you in a computer or whatever. I don't want anybody else doing that. And to, for yeah, somebody, showing the ID, showing your ID protects your right to vote. That's right. Never you mind don't. the other people, it's you. That's right. You, that's you, the only person that does. And, and, and it's the same thing like like if you use your credit card or you use uh, any form of ID to do anything, purchase anything online, you would be incredibly offended, not only offended, but there would be legal ramifications if anybody else stole your ID or used your ID or, or tried to claim, even if they didn't take your ID or, or use it, they just used your name and just used your address. That would be an incredibly offensive thing. That would be an incredibly illegal thing. And everywhere else in the world, going to the liquor store, going to a bar, going to a restaurant, signing up, uh, I don't know, just to, I don't know, get anything. Get You have to show some ID somewhere. You are you. And anybody else, I mean, that is an entirely illegal, potentially federal lawsuit that's going on there. But yet in voting, voting, somehow it's all loosey-goosey, oh, don't worry about it, oh, okay, your name, okay, whatever. Oh, you have six heads and you come from the planet Zog? Where do you live? I live on James Street. Oh, James Street. Oh, there you go. Well, okay, go ahead, Tom. See, I, I think part of the argument is that everybody says that we have the right to vote, and I disagree that no, voting we is don't. a right. We don't. Voting is a privilege. It, it, and the, the reason I define it as a privilege is we've changed the laws many, many times in this nation alone from the founding until now. If it were a right, we wouldn't have been changing the laws. Everybody, including my newborn uh, twin grandsons, could vote because I could derive who they'd vote for. They'd vote for the people their parents voted for. Hmm. So it, it's, not, it's not a right. It's a privilege. And another privilege we have is driving a car. And that privilege, you need to be prepared to drive a car. You need to know the rules. You need to know what they mean, this and that. Well, voting's got some rules, too. It's called candidates. It's got issues. And it offends me or it upsets me that we allow people same-day registration to vote. What, they just come back from Mars? They, they didn't know this was coming out for a long time? Right, right. And... So there's different ways to do fraud, but, but still the most important thing is if we could get 
ten percent of that three quarter or that two thirds that don't vote to come out and vote. I think we would see wider margins than the one in the two percent. Right. It's just I think a lot of people have given up, and and in a way you can't blame them because Lord knows we can elect a new president, we can elect a new Congress, but it's not going to change the fate of the American because of all the bureaucracies that we can't vote out hmm. until we do something else. So, so go ahead, sir. Voting is a thing. I started a group. Uh, when I, I, I lost the primary in 2010 for Congress against Nikki Songas, and um, I lost it to a progressive, uh, nice guy, he had good hair and stuff. I don't. That's probably one, another reason I lost. I don't have much hair on my head. Uh, but uh, it, I started the show ID to vote, and part of the show ID was also show I deserve to vote. Sure. And then, and because that's the most important. It, I, I don't want to have litmus tests or I don't want to have this or that, but boy, I tell you, there's a part of me that wishes that you could give everybody five simple questions and if they got any of them wrong, they weren't allowed to vote. Mm. Like, who's the vice president? Or how many senators are there from your state? Or you know, little things like that. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right, know, right. Just as a civics test. When I and uh, But we don't do that. <clears throat> One one of the members of my local Worcester Tea Party um, had said to me, uh, we were talking about elections, the information of that people receive, and um, you know, there's always that term called the ill-informed uh, voter. And this person said to me, "No, it's called the mal-informed voter." And I and I I stepped back. I thought to myself that is probably far more accurate is it, it's not that they're ill-informed or not informed or they don't don't give a crap it's that they don't give a crap and then the stuff that they receive is bad information and so when they go to show up to the polls they, it, it's almost like a free-for-all and in in 2014 you know, I, I I didn't have a chance to work as a as a as a poll worker this year, but I spoke to many people from the Worcester Republican uh, Town Committee that the shenanigans keep going on. It's gotten to the point now where a couple of years ago it was like, oh wait a minute, we have a question of this one or two people. Oh wait a, wait a minute. Oh look at this person. Let's check this other ID here. No, the floodgates have opened. Anybody's yes, yeah. voting. It, Anybody's voting. And we and instead of us as poll workers being trained and the police being trained to say, no, you gotta push these people out, you gotta no, no, you gotta no, get out of here. No, get out of here. Instead that of doing comes that from the right. Yeah. That comes from the people believing they have a right to vote. What we're seeing now in twenty fourteen is like, Oh, don't say anything. Oh, don't do anything. We'll fix it later. Don't worry, because you can't deny anybody to vote because that'll go up on the news. Oh, wait, wait, no, don't, don't say anything. You know, years ago it would be like, wait a minute, who are you? What's going on here? No, you can't vote. You're not on the rest register. No, please leave the room now. That would be what you're supposed to do. But today, well, year, no, years ago what they did was they gave you a provisional ballot. Right. And then, and then you had a chance to check and see what was going on and does it make sense and this and that. And and today that's that should be the same case too. If you're not on the if you're not on the list, I'm sorry, you get a provisional ballot. But that's not I got into an argument with a couple of liberals because they, they sent me an article on these two ladies from Pennsylvania that might not have been able to vote because they didn't go and get their IDs due to the new voter laws in Pennsylvania. And they said, we're going to deny these people the right to vote. And I said, they shouldn't have waited until the last minute. Exactly. They, you know, we have elections every two years. They should have gotten up and got it taken care of And who are these people? two years ago. Who are these people who don't have IDs? Don't you have a Social Security card in your desk somewhere? Hello? Don't you well, have... even, even um, President Obama, the week of the elections, talked to, what was he? He was talking to Al, Al Mr. Sharpton. Uh, the 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 reverend and the and the person that loves all races, uh, and uh, he was 
he was he was talking about uh, the fact that everybody has an ID now. Everybody's got an ID. That's not a big deal. Well, he is... The problem with the election is not enough people are going to come vote. Now, this is our president, the dear leader, that's admitting to Al Sharpton that everybody and he even says even all blacks have got ids they need ids how else can you survive in the united states without an id exactly well uh, well i just read it uh, john fund in his book i just read in the diatribe uh supposedly 78 percent of all blacks in the state of uh, i forget what it was in wisconsin or something wisconsin, they don't said, they yeah. don't have ids 78 percent of every single black american in wisconsin doesn't have id so no, they do. Wisconsin is a very blue state. They all, they probably have multiple IDs for multiple votes. Right. But that's the thing. That, that's the thing. I mean, these numbers. I mean, these numbers are made up. There was another quote that I just said. It's like forty percent of American women don't have birth certificates. I mean, where <laughs> where do these numbers come from? These things are officially entered into the record. As a reason why you can't have voter ID. It's like, really? Seriously? 40% of American women? Wow. My wife has a birth certificate. She has a social security card. She has a driver's license. She She's registered to vote. She also has to give all two information. She works two jobs, so she has to give that information. Excuse me? I mean, where do these people make this stuff up? Seriously, Tom. Out of thin air? Right. Really? Really, they, they, they really do. It, it the the president last week talked about his robust economy and how it's the fastest decrease in the deficit in the history of all mankind. And if you just Google deficit decreases over decades, you'll find that it was a lie. We just jumped another trillion dollars. We're now eighteen trillion. Yes, yes. Well, that's that's the big number. He he's happy that we're not going in debt quite as quickly. But then again. <laughs> He's been, we've been collecting tax money for Obamacare now for three years, and next year a lot of the costs are going to come into play. So we'll, we'll, but that, that's a different thing. What worries me about voting, though, is the anchor babies, which I believe with all my heart are not American citizens, mm -hmm. and, and it's very easy to prove it, and the fact that our registrars in the towns who have a government job and they need to get more people to maintain their government job and they need to get more people to maintain their government job so they need to get more people on the rolls because then they can hire people which then means they need more money themselves because they're now a manager it's a vicious cycle right. but I'm very concerned about the fact that we are we no longer care about American citizenship and how special it is I was very lucky I was born in the United States Period. I, thank God that, but I was. Now, I have earned my citizenship. I've been very involved in earning my citizenship, as have you and as have most of the people. Mm -hmm. But when you get people that come into this country and we believe or we, we, we allow them to pretend that they're citizens and their sole goal is to change this country into what they left, I mean, they left despotism. They left fraud. They left corruption. They left sure. get on the right team, and then yeah. you'll get subsidies and stuff. Yeah. And they want to make this country more like that. I don't understand that. And you're right. If more people, these these votes shouldn't be one to two percent difference. That's insane. Voting is an act of decisiveness. That's right. It's it's and and you cannot tell me that the majority of Americans believe in the social progressive outlook on life you you can't you can't tell me that it's designed around fraud and one of the things i wanted to talk to you about i'm going to ask you about the project that you're working on but i, I let's let's just answer this question now it, it, the question i have is why does the fraud candidate get to keep the fraud seat we we see that this goes on and then you hear in the news, oh, so-and-so in such-and-such -such district or this, that, the other thing, you know, there's possibility of fraud and so-and-so uh, has uncovered 5,000, you know, ballots hidden in a box somewhere and this, that, the other thing. Suddenly the evidence is there. It's on the news and it's like the cameras are there and it's like, uh, but yet the elected official who won on fraud voting 
oh no, they get sworn in and they get to hold their seat and this, that, the other thing. And then the whole story about fraud or the possibility of fraud just kind of goes away. And the fraud candidate gets to keep their seat. Why isn't all of this suspended, everything put on hold? I'm sorry, Minnesota or Nebraska or whatever state it is. You don't get to have a senator right now because of this bullshit that went off to him. And now we have to investigate it. And until we're fun finished investigating it, then we might actually have to have a special election. Why doesn't this happen? Well, uh, it... Two things. I think that if you have fraud and you have one or two congressmen winning an election, the 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 person that lost, if indeed they prove fraud, they should take it. They should take it to the federal court because it's a federal office, because they were the injured party, and you have to have standing in order to sue. Right. And I think they should. I don't know why they don't. Maybe they don't want to. Well, one of the reasons they don't want to do that is the media will portray them as a bad loser, even if there is fraud, because. Right. The media has taken sides. They're no longer, the media is no longer responsible for the freedom of this country like they were for so many years. They're now responsible to ensure that their buddies get in and the, and, and we turn into a utopia, which mm -hmm. is impossible. Mm -hmm. If the Senate, I, I was thinking the other day with, uh, what, is, what is her name up in um, uh, in New Hampshire? What's the woman's name? Jean I forget. Jean Shaheen. Jean Shaheen? Jean Shaheen, yes. Can you imagine, Jean Shaheen, what would happen if the state legislature had to meet and they said, okay, she's going to be our senator again, and then it came out that she was the principal lead runner for the IRS to investigate conservatives? The state, the, <laughs> I would imagine that the state uh, elected officials or representatives would meet and go, oh, you're out. We're, we're going to get somebody else to fill your spot. Exactly. It's, but it's a little bit difficult when you're elected by the people. But the and, pe and it's funny that people, I, I don't know why the people of New Hampshire don't completely erupt and go, no, she's got to sit down. She is the principal lead person in the IRS fraud. It's insane. It is insane. I wonder I mean, if the co entire country has gone insane. Here, here's the other thing that I spoke to many of the candidates when I was doing my candidate interviews. These things are right in front of of our face they're there and it's gotten to the point where it's almost as if the government and i'm not going to use the word obama administration i'm talking about the government from the federal to the state to the local everybody does this they lie they cheat they steal right in front of our face they tell us right in front of our face that they're lying cheating and stealing and we do nothing we don't we don't I mean, torches and pitchforks. We're, we're not there doing something about it. It's like, oh, that's business as usual, government as usual. Oh, anyway, oh, someone texted me on my cell phone. Anyway, well, let me get back to you. You know, it's like we're, it's like that's our life now. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's three groups of people, I think. There's those that want to be slaves of the government, and, and I use that word on purpose. I think that if you rely on the government for benefits and for for your food stamps and, and everything else, and you're at their you're at their uh, mercy as to what you get, you're no more than a slave because you've lost your your pursuit of happiness, and that's one of our eternal rights, natural rights given from God is to pursue happiness. Right. You've got those people; they're they're okay with the status quo. Maybe they're afraid that they might fail. Which is one of the greatest rights as Americans have is the right to fail and get up, brush yourself off, and start over again. But we, we don't we don't look at that as a positive anymore. We should, but but we don't. You have the other group that gets involved, like you or me. We vote, we get known, and then you've got the people that are really really too busy. They they, I think they've given up. So they're going to take care of themselves. They're going to hunker down. They don't vote. They're probably involved in their churches. This and that. I wish we could reach those people, but they see the same stuff, same stuff, same stuff over and over and over again. And so if somebody comes out that truly stands for morality and virtue, which is what John Adams once said we needed or our mm -hmm. republic would never stand, mm -hmm. that, uh, because that. you can't you can't legislate right and wrong, which is what we're trying to do now. 
I mean, think about hate crimes for crying out loud. That one drives me completely you, you insane. You just have to be a virtuous society. A, a true you have republic, to be a virtuous society. A, and a we've got so many people stand. that now are taking, and I know this is going to go on the internet, and it might get you, you might censor it or whatever. Sir, we you're on the meat and potato show. You go right ahead, sir. We, we have a president that uses the Tenth Commandment, yes, the commandment given by God to Moses, to teach people to covet. Look at what they have. Why don't you have that? You should have what they have. He uses that to divide this country. That's right. wrong. Right. And that is... And then we, we also have the same president and the same attorney general, or Eric Holder, and we have so many other people that take the fourth commandment, which is honor your parents, respect people in authority, and they wash that away. Sure, sure. And right. so these things that were given to us thousands of years ago, rules for civilization, if you will, not rules for radicals, these are rules how to live together as a society. Right. We take those and we throw them away and say they're religious, and they're not religious. They're rules to live as a society so that each of us can have our rights, can have our freedom, can go cast our votes, this and that, which is important. Excellent. But we've completely disregarded that, and, and it's, it's going to be the death of the United States. Tom, let me take two seconds here. I want to pause for a minute. I need to change out some batteries in the camera. We'll be right back with part two of the Tom Weaver interview on the Meat and Potato Show. Conservative talk, awesome rock. Hang on, Tom. 